Hell Satin, King of Fabrics. I thought you were dead. Sun out of your eyes and be yourself. I heard you were dead. She's dead, wrapped in plastic. That man's dead back then. It was worse than dead. He must be dead. Is this a dead man, Duck? Hello, Ninnies. Welcome back to the Roast Motor Podcast. I'm Tom. I'm Travis. I am Cody. And we're here to do the usual. And if you don't know what the usual it is, we're going to have some fun. We're going to shit on some people. Yeah, dog. We had brunch today. Yeah, we went out for brunch. <laughs> Two of us had brunch today. Cody had brunch, and now I it's gone. I unbrunched. Yeah, he unbrunched. <laughs> Got he that un- weird gas bubble, and I tried to get it out, but everything other than the gas bubble came out. Yeah, the gas is still in there. He's packed. Yeah. Yeah. Horrible. Packed to the brim. It's just leaking juices. Yeah, he's like a helium tank filled mm. with fart. We had a good good Sunday. Good Sunday. And endless samosas, not not man moses. Yeah, we went we for, were full blown women. Yeah, we went to the what the, the mimos. He, <laughs> we had Prosecco Mimos. You had some clams. I did. Oh. I had clams on the biggest plate. Yeah, there was four clams on a tiny ass, they or just, big ass little plate. Yeah, that was fun. They should they could have just brought that to you on a dustpan or something. Right, goes, in the, right, right in the apron, you know, <laughs> just right in the apron. <laughs> just empty it out on the table. <laughs> Shake it out, yeah. But there's ice with it. Yeah, the ice is in another pocket. <laughs> there's ice with it, and then like the, the inside pocket has like the tartar sauce. I want that classy cocktail sauce where it's in the Heinz ketchup packet. Oh, and you can either squeeze it or dip it? Right. Whoa. Yeah, yeah those are premium. Let me it, tell you about that. Advanced condiments Whew. right now. Good stuff. Yeah. You could dip or squeeze. Dip or squeeze. That's what life is all about. You I want think, choices. I think if, if, if you're having a hard time in your life and uh, everyone goes through times where they're, they're in a dark place, sure. just think about dipping or squeezing. <laughs> you're going to be in a better place. Always have an option. I put my hand up on my hip and I dip and squeeze. That's the end of the song. It's catchy. <laughs> <laughs> where have we where have we gone? Where where are we? All right, that was our brunch experience, Hello, dipping hi. and squeezing. Uh, one gassy boy, wings and had wings. We had wings and endless mimosas. Mm. All right, we, so we eat like dumb bachelors. Yeah, dog. Well, dumb, before we move on to bachelors. chopping block times, do we have any other segments today? Did we write anything? Because we don't communicate before we start this podcast. <laughs> no communicate. Uh, I had an interesting occurrence at work. These. Yeah, tell oh, me. Yeah, tell me. Uh, they caught on to the green. Well, they found you smoking wet? No, they they caught on to... Oh, they figured uh, out that you only wear green it, stuff? I, no, I, I don't only wear green, I always wear green. Right. <laughs> Difference, <laughs> motherfucker. Uh, for those of you playing along at home, Cody has OCD and needs to wear green. But they... It, it was just like after work and they finally like... They, they confronted me. Why do you do this? They were angry. I like infused mystery into Did someone life. like put you up against the wall? Kind like, of. With their... They were like, like, why, why do you do this? And I'm like, I have OCD, and they weren't satisfied still. Did They're you like, use a green smoke bomb to get out of there? No. Just, <laughs> I'm gone! See you on Friday! <laughs> no, no, but it was, they were very upset that there wasn't any significant answer with, as to why I'm weird. But yeah. very interesting to see when people approach me about, like, why do you always wear green? I, for one, one Halloween, you dressed in red, and everyone was like, who the fuck is this guy? Did you, did you hear the more serious version of that incident? No. There was an unplanned version where I was just in that same exact house that the Halloween party was in. Good friends live there. And I didn't have my signature green shirt on. I had a, a just regular, non-threatening white shirt. And the, the good people pull up and see me waiting outside, not realizing it's me, and, like, are in their car contemplating calling the cops. <laughs> like, like, who who's the man... In front of us, were you jerking it, it? it had to process. It had are you to jerking process. it? No. What Why would they call the cops on the man with a white shirt? Because they didn't realize who I was, and I was inside their house, which is very strange. Oh, you were in in the house yes. in a bush. You brought the bush no, inside was, the house, and you were looking at I was, the bush. Cody is usually allowed inside that house, but I didn't look like Cody at that time. Yeah, well, I don't trust people in white shirts myself, mm. so I understand. It was it was a weird thing. Green boy, greenest man. There you go. You heard it from the green boy himself. <laughs> Let's uh, let's truck on, if you will. That's a phrase, right? Yeah, so, dog, trucking, trucking, boy. I did today's keep fucking on trucking, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> I did today's. What did you say? I, truck I, on? Yeah, just got truck on. I think that's, that's like a British trucking. Like truck keep keep calm and hit, hit throw yourself in front of a truck or a yeah. lorry. 
an Indian term. It's a mixture of a British territory term and uh, trucking on. When you say in the... You must truck on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I did the research on this boy today. Who's guess, on the slab, Travis? Guess who we're doing? It's Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando? Yeah. Oh, boy. Is he with the Waynes brothers? You might have known him from a billion movies. Yeah. He was the Godfather. He was uh, in A Streetcar Named Desire. He was nominated for six Oscars, one, two. It's estimated they ate a ton of food daily. A ton. A ton. One metric, a metric ton. ton. Yeah. Whoa, wait. No joking there. Okay. Literal ton. I might be exaggerating okay. a little <laughs> bit. I might like, be whoa. exaggerating a like, hair. Whoa, 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 whoa. I might be exaggerating a hair, but okay. he okay. ate a lot. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And before I jump into his story, I'm going to shoot. He was, he was known as the king of method acting. Yeah. And Cody, you can tell us. What is method acting? Method acting is what we know nowadays as being a decent actor. Like, I read back in the old days, I don't know, don't ask me the numbers, that actors were pretty much just people on stage dressed up to catch a line from the director and belt it out so people in the rafters could hear. A lot of men in drag at that point. Yeah, right? a lot of men in drag, like, you know, Shakespearean type. Instead era. of blow darts, they would use words. What? Ooh. Say this line. Say this line. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much, yeah, that's how it would go. There was, there was no talent or skill to it, and... You just our, need to our, project. I can act also! No, it's more about putting yourself in your character's shoes and realizing, like, desires and fears. My character has shoes and fear! <laughs> he's, a, he's a phobic of shoes. He's a shoe horribly... Shoeophobic. Yeah, he's shoeophobic, horribly confuzzled. Stella! Stiletto! <laughs> All right, so before we get into Marlon Brando, we know a method. Actor, so they get into their character a lot, right? I'm going to give you guys, we're doing a little quiz here. Uh, so I'm going to give quizzes. you some really weird ways that actors took method acting to like the extreme. And you have to guess who that actor is. And you get bonus credit if you can name the movie that they were in. All right? Oh, all right. Okay. I know all these. You know all of them? Mm-hmm. Everyone. All right, here we go. Number one. This actor placed broken glass in his shoes, forcing him to limp around on set. Maybe that would be Lon Chaney. <laughs> nope. <laughs> this is Bruce Willis? No, that was Billy Bob Thornton in Sling Blade. Oh, king. oh I'm going to put the glass in my shoe. i got to play uh, my new band. What is Sling Blade? I've <laughs> never <laughs> seen Sling Blade. No, 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 I'm, I'm a heathen. Run it, run it over for me and the people that don't know. Just watch Sling oh, Blade. It's Damn a it. limpy. It's he, a... Pl- he plays a southern uh, doy doy. <laughs> and he used glass to help him be the limp around. around. All right. But that's like an extreme thing. Like, wouldn't you just walk with a limp? He's like, no, I need to feel my character. Fucking put what glass is, in my shoes. What does his feet look like at the end of the day? Probably uh, the feet were off camera. Probably. You know what? It was probably. It was probably, probably, Brando's feet. It, it was a ruse to get hazard pay. That's what I'm going with. All right. I'm calling you out, Billy. Yeah, he probably had to sign <laughs> some paperwork to get the right glass. And, you know, you know the blood. Proof shoes or yeah. whatever. <laughs> His feet are bleeding again. How yeah. many sets did he ruin? For fuck's His sake! His trailer was a nightmare. It looked like a murder scene. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just put these old dogs up for a rest. <laughs> you imagine fucking playing? Oh, good luck, <laughs> dude, dude. Imagine playing Twister with him. Like re- everything red. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. So the next actor. This actor pulled his tooth out, knifed his face up, spent a few days watching horses die. And didn't bathe for four months to get into his role. Uh, fuck. I'm going to go with uh, Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogue? Yeah. What about you? You reacted to that. Uh, I'm going to take a wild stab here and say Christian Bale. No, sir. That was uh, Sweetheart Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. Oh, oh goodness. Oh, for his role here? in Fury. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, That's where he's in a tank. Yeah, he's in a tank. He also got baptized and shit. So run that down. What oh, did yeah, you do one more time? He likes guard now, right? Yeah, he likes guard yeah. because of this movie. Run I that... liked him better in Even Stevens. <laughs> Jesus. Run that down one more time. What was it? He pulled his tooth out, knifed his face up, spent days watching horses die, and didn't bathe for four months. Also got baptized. Why were the horses dying? To get it, like, see death. If you want to be sad. No, no, but why are horses dying? It was probably to make uh, food for your for your native oh. state, Hawaii, spam. I was going <laughs> to say glue, but thank no. you for making it racially insensitive. <laughs> Those two aren't mutually exclusive. You can make food and glue at the same horse, and it's a-okay. You can make spam glue. You can glue your spam together. Yeah. Make a super spam. 
You can make a spam castle. All right, and our last... Our That's l- horrific. <laughs> <laughs> our last boy here. He had himself lifted around on set, wouldn't leave a wheelchair, and insisted that his meals be food sped. That food, <laughs> food fed, f- spoon fed, spoon fed. Yes, that would be Eddie Redmayne, Patrick Stewart. <laughs> nope, that was Daniel Day Lewis. What role? Oh, my, my left, left foot. foot. Oh, his <laughs> left foot. But imagine fucking having to lift Daniel Day Lewis around everywhere. He's like, I'm he's in like, the method. Yeah, he's like my height. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. He played Lincoln for fuck's sake. Yeah, he's rude as shit. Wow. <laughs> Who carries him? What did he? Didn't he also do some crazy shit for um when he played? Bill the Butcher. Yeah, he had a bunch of shit. He wore period, um, period coats during the the whole uh, filming of it. The whole filming of it. He got so when he was at the Motel Six, getting that fucking shitty Manhattan. Yeah, he was wearing a period coat with the, <laughs> with the frills on it. Yeah, and he got really sick, and they had to stop shooting because he was like they were shooting in the cold. Oh yeah, yeah. He also took like butchery classes and shit. That's pretty badass. Also, famous one, Christian Bale. The machinist. Oh yeah, just that's like, why. Yeah, that, was my, that explains my stab. What was his shenanigan there? Just <laughs> he lost like half of his body weight just for, that for role. the role. Yeah, mm-hmm. looks like a nightmare creature. Yeah, if you haven't seen the machinist, you don't have to watch it. Just look up pictures. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. it's gross. Uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's a, it's a good movie. But he looks like a gross man. He looks so weird. That's the effect. Yeah, yeah. That's the sexiest, sexy Christian Bale effect. All right, let's jump into Marlon Brando. Let's Marlon, do it. Do it. Marlon, that's, that's a fish. Yeah. Named after a fish. No. Uh, he was born in 1924 in Omaha, Nebraska. A lot happening there. Yeah, real was interesting there. Dust bowl? Quickly realized that there's nothing happening in Omaha, so his family moved to, close to Chicago on a farm. <clears throat> and he was born to Marlon Sr. and Dottie Brando. So can we call him Junior for the rest of the episode? Hey, he's Marls Junes. Marls Junes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dottie was a well-established actress, and Marlon was an agricultur- agricultural chemist. Who raised them? Raised him loosely, I'd say. So he's the guy responsible for putting Brando on... Brando on plants? Yes. Yeah, that's what yeah, plants crave. <laughs> it's what plants crave. He was trying to figure out what plants really wanted. Well, it, this is the 50s, so it's probably whiskey. Now, now I mentioned that uh, he was raised by them. There's, again, like a loose take on raised. Because both of them were incredibly terrible drunks and had extramarital affairs. Uh, okay, when you say terrible oh. drunks, does that mean they were good at being drunks or bad at being people? Bad at being people. Okay. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, have to go levels of it. Later and... statement. Young Marlon Brando would have to carry Dottie, his mom, out of bars in Chicago. That's no way to be a mom. No. <laughs> No, wait, no, no, Said nothing. Tom for... with 100% conviction. <laughs> I never cared. No, no, my I, mom no I know this one isn't right. All this neglect fucked up little Marlon, and he suffered in school. He was actually kicked out of two high schools. Two Count high them. schools? One, two high schools after being held back in the first. So then he was putting the third one in and starting the rock star game bully. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so exactly. he's like an ultra senior. Very close. In the first one, he got kicked out for riding his motorcycle through the halls. Hell yeah. Yeah, he was mm. like, fucking do a wheelie. He shit. was trying to play Batman. How many fatalities? Uh, a billion. This is when his childhood friend Wally Cox, who would later go on to voice Underdog. Oh, <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Knew him as a kid. The voice of Underdog would say this is when he developed his ability to mimic people and farm animals. And he actually developed this certain tone of voice that would wake his mom up from drunken stupors. Oh, man. That's hilarious. That's like a Resident Evil boss. I could just see a Don Corleone being like a cow. Like, <laughs> <"Bull."> <laughs> but why, why did Underdog have like the, the boobs that went around his gut? I don't Is that ever that. explained? Does he have bo- oh, it's like a baggy fucking coat. Is that what that was? I just assumed he had like under boob or. I mean, dogs have 10 nips, so that's part of his nips. Is it 10? Yeah. yeah. Tell, where's Dahlia? Come here. Count them. Come here, Pooch. How many nips uh, you got? She's laying on her side. Yeah, I'm yeah, seeing she's five. Sleeping. She's so. sleeping. I'm going to assume the other side is five, too. Yeah. Without a school degree, Marlon found himself as a dig ditcher, which I didn't know was a profession. A but... dig ditcher. Yeah. Ditch digger. Ditch digger. <laughs> dig ditcher. Ditch digger digger burger. Yeah. Well, dig ditcher. Dig ditcher. Dig, <laughs> he was a... dig ditcher found... like... Yeah, he... Marlon found himself as a professional diglet. <laughs> dig ditcher sounds like a guy who was really good at like some sport and then didn't exactly make it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I was I was the best curler in the area. Uh, so. Dig ditcher for the bugle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyone think that uh, a dig ditcher was a dig? I said it again, <laughs> dig ditcher. It's, both ways are right. For yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's for, a dig ditcher I, now. Until the Fuck end of it. the cast, both ways are right. 
Yep. He dug holes for a living. <laughs> hole, hole digger. Cool. Hole digger. Which I didn't know was a career, but apparently that is. Mm. What, were the, what, what were the holes for? Well, if you tell jokes Digging. while you're doing it, you could be dug funny. <laughs> Dig funny. I'm going to shut up. <laughs> he tried to enlist in the army to get out of this fucking miserable hole, hole place. Is Doug. Wait, yeah. what year is this now? This is uh the forties. So he was. So this was like World War Two yeah. ending time. Or? I think it was. I think this might have been during World War Two. All right. So that's, everyone wanted to fucking join. So that job sucks. Yeah. If you're trying to go to Normandy because this hole is annoying, this must be a bad hole. <laughs> it's a bad gig. I can remember like hearing like Oscars were made out of wood because of like war conservations. Uh, I wonder if he was ever like nominated for one of those, you know what I mean? No, he, this Probably was Probably not. His no, acting this, career was oh, in the 50s, really. Yeah, his career started off in the uh, started not. out in the 50s. But he he was he didn't get into the army because he had a trick knee. What? There's a medical term back then. A trick, trick knee. knee. It sounds useful though. Like, whoa, he just got a trick knee. Where does knees go? He could probably do mad kick flips over tigers. Wow. Dude, he's all about the hard flip. That yeah. He's a hard, tremendously hard trick. He's really good at getting the secret tape. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Hawk's secret sex tape. It's a trick, bro. <laughs> was that what it was on those? Yeah, that's what was on the Tony Hawk's secret sex tape. Uh, instead of digging ditches, he couldn't join the army. He followed his sisters to New York City because he was inspired to be an actor. I uh, wanted to be on the, the Broadway with his name thespian. in big lights. Yes. And his sister recalled that uh, he was in a school play and enjoyed it. So he decided to go to New York City to study acting because that's the only thing he enjoyed. Doing. He enjoyed it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I liked it. I'm going to move. Got to become an actor. That's weird how it's kind of like inverted now. Like, go to LA to get famous as an actor nowadays. Right. Well, he was trying to get into the theater. Uh, oh, he wanted the Broadway Stay. experience. Yes. Uh, okay. I see where we're going with this. He actually studied under Stella Adler uh, in this whole method acting theory, which doesn't really work well for stage. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking about it, and it makes sense. You want to uh, project yourself, yeah. and you have to animate yourself very largely, larger than life. Grandiose. Right. But there's an interesting thing when he was doing these classes. During one exercise, Stella instructed the class to act like chickens, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then added that a nuclear bomb was about to fall on them. Most of the class started clucking wildly and running around, but Marlin just sat there calmly and pretended to lay an egg. And later, she asked him why he re reacted that way, and he was like, I'm a chicken. We don't know what bombs are. Yeah. He's a smart method man. He was the method boy. So his first role was actually out here on Long Island in Sayville, which is very, very off Broadway. That's very far. That's, yeah. that's 70 miles from Broadway. <laughs> Nothing happened much in Sayville. No, I can't know. Community college? Yeah. Oh, sick. Uh, he took a lot of criticism during his career, uh, early career, because of insubordinate behavior, uh, erratic performances that weren't consistent sounds just basically like he was trying to be himself on stage oh yeah this is the guy that fucking drove a motorcycle through his high school okay know? that makes sense i'm doing me one thing he said about stage acting was that they don't think you can act unless you yell it's kind of true every yeah. time i've seen a fucking broadway oh yeah you know like fucking loud well now they use laugh mics it's annoying. But it's, it's confusing eh. because, like, by the nature of, like, theatrical people can't be sad because you can't be sad screaming. They always have to be enraged. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's no screaming <laughs> sad. Yeah. It's pissed can't... off and drunk and shitty. Yeah. And That's why every theater character, like, just skips being sad and goes to enraged atomic. Somebody told him that he should run for Stanley or try out for Stanley Kowalski in Tennessee Williams' new play, Street Carbon and Desire. Rando showed up to. To William's house. Before he auditioned, he asked him why the lights were out. Apparently he had some lights out. Tennessee. Wow. Uh. So he proceeded to actually fix the fuses and unclog his toilet. And then did the audition. Like, I'll probably all smell you shit. Yeah. He was the toilet. You didn't clog, you don't do that. I but know, I noticed your lights are not on. <laughs> I was taking a shit in your toilet. And it's still there. Something is broken. It this sounds do like a want Sasha Baron. This sounds like a Sasha Baron Cohen skit, right? <laughs> the law fixed up or something. Can I have the job? I'm just thinking, like, probably the audition started with like Tennessee. What were you eating last night? Oh, I know, corn. Yes, bread. <laughs> Whatever it was turns into poop. <laughs> <laughs> it always turns to poop. William loved the audition and said it was the most magnificent read he had ever witnessed. Probably because oh. he just fixed his toilet. This guy's dope as shit. He knows how to read, and he fixed my toilet. Man, fuses. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a twofer. Getting a twofer. Sure is. Brando seemed perfect for this role. It was an angry, brash man that 
seem to wild out and just, you know, erratic behavior. He's like a poker player, you know? Gotcha. Um, and during the play's run, this is when he earned his signature uh, broken nose. If you've ever noticed Brando, he's got a fucking goose nose. Did, did that, on. Did that break also affect nose. his jaw? Is that what, like, or is he just slack jaw? I think he just had a line? slack jaw, but I think I just heard about his nose. Beer harvest came in well this year. Beer harvest is doing just fine. Thank you for asking. I'm method acting. For you, the rest you're going to method act the whole time? Yeah. Am I going to have to carry you around this food feed you? I'm going to be a Stephen Hawking's cyborg boy. <laughs> Plus, <laughs> Bonzi What, Bonzi the Bonzi man in these little No, Bonzi, get out of here! It's Bonzi no Bonzi again. I can't believe it. Here Fuck you, Bonzi, buddy. Fuck you too, guy. <laughs> Guys, oh. <laughs> this is like the laziest to side. <laughs> Fuck you do, guy. Brando earned his broken nose with a fight off stage from a stagehand who you'd find out was actually an amateur boxer. They got in a little tiff. Oh, no shit. This amateur boxer That's just why I don't get in tiffs. Yeah. Because the <laughs> other fucker could be an amateur or professional boxer. Yep. And you're, you're not weighed before that, so he could be like... It was Sonny Liston. <laughs> <laughs> So this stagehand broke his nose, gave him a black eye, but Marlon, kudos to him, walked right on stage and played it off as if Stanley had gotten into a fistfight prior. Whoa. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And after the show was over, he walked uh, to the hospital himself, got his nose kind of fixed up, but he never reset it, be- and uh, that kind of turned out good for him. You because gotta reset the nose. No, because that was his signature fucking schnoz. Um, Yeah. Yeah, dog. Everyone's got a schnoz. You don't the think bigger, schnoz the bigger and weirder be... it is, the better you look. I.e., <laughs> myself. Mm. <laughs> the one thing I want to mention, I, I don't think I was going to mention this, but Marlon Brando was a big internet troll towards the end of his life. Really? Skipping ahead. He loved the internet. I could see him hanging on playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> was he on 4chan or something? Yeah, probably a B-tard. Ooh. Uh, Brando, as we all know, is a great movie actor. Can, yeah. Probably one of the best of the 20th century. The American Film Institute named him the fourth best. I don't know who fuck it beat. Mm. Uh, Humphrey Bogart. Fill, fill was it in. Top. Fill it in. Hum- Humphrey Bogart was the Bogart. top. Yeah, I think he was the top. He's the best. He's such a good boy. That guy is awesome. I'm like, come here, Bogart. What they got? Jimmy Stewart on there? Yeah, Jimmy Stewart. I think was three. Dale yeah, Earnhardt Jr. Um, number two. I don't know who two was. Dale, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Mm, Dale, Dale, Dale Earnhardt Jr.? Yeah, it was number two. <laughs> yeah, it was Dale Earnhardt Jr. They number actually, two. They, they, it was actually a mishmash list. It was best racers <laughs> and, and actors. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In order to be a good racer, you gotta be an actor. Yeah. You only thought he was winning acting. You only thought he crashed into a wall. <laughs> he and, came in fifth every time, but he just went up to that podium and took the trophy. Yeah. And the Oscar for first place goes to <laughs> Dale Earnhardt! Dale Earnhardt Jr.! What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> here at Roast Mortem, we are not here to jerk off people. So I'm going to kind of glance over his career, talk about some of the craziest shit that he did. I'm not going to go step by step. We already know how he got into, you know, we're not trying to We're not trying to jerk off dicks. We're trying to <laughs> dump them. We're trying to expose dicks. Yeah, we're trying to. Yeah. I- I'm going to expose his crazy method acting, uh, how difficult it was to work with this bitch, and his life in excess. And I'm really going to dig into this life of excess. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. I want you to drop it on. The excessive is. excessive life, especially in the waste. His first role was the men in 1955, and the way that he prepared for this was laying in bed for a month in an army hospital to understand the mind of a wounded soldier. Sir, we need that bed. We have critically wounded. Please <laughs> leave. No, I can't. I'm staying. <laughs> Bring me lunch. <laughs> Where's Kraft? Yeah. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Has his middle fingers erect. Like, Excuse me, sir, I am an actor! <laughs> He's going to win first place one day, I know it. Jesus, Marlon. During his very first performance in The Men, people started noticing his very strange eating habits. So, what, what age is this? Strange. This was 1955. So, he, he was. What kind of. Late 20s. Late, yeah, 20s. late 20s frame is about. Okay. Late 20s. I mean, if you watch early Marlon, a lot of people know. Brando from The Godfather, he's a little chubby in that. Yeah. But if you watch his earlier movies, he's, he's stud. A, he's, he's fucking he's, stallion. Yeah, he's cut. Dude, that boy's yoked. Mm-hmm. Brando's early 50s diet consisted of mainly junk food, usually take, take out Chinese, and a jar of peanut butter. Fuck like, yeah. Simultaneously? Or? I would imagine so. He's a trash monster. I, peanut butter. I feel like that's what sad people eat. 
<laughs> yeah. like, the, the two of them together. General Sows in the in the peanut butter just, just like, mix it all up. Just like boneless spare ribs in the, in the jiffy, listening to "Wake Me Up Inside," <laughs> sitting on your couch and just crying into it. Are you a smooth or a crunchy man? Tom? Me, I'm, either one. I don't Whoa, give a shit. Goes both ways. I'm Travis. all about a crunchy dog. Really, I like smooth. Mm. I don't care that much. It's it's for babbies, but I I do I do appreciate the the, the texture. Hey, I do I do like ketchup, and that's for babbies too. Mm. If there's one thing you know about my eating styles, I don't like to chew, except for with peanut butter. <laughs> Grown ass man, like yeah, ketchup <laughs> for babies. Don't chew. <laughs> <laughs> the way he stayed so in shape is that he would do these crash diets before he shot uh, before he shot a movie. Uh. So he would like drop. 40, 50, even 60 pounds before a roll. Now, he was diabetic later, right? Oh, yeah, we'll get to that. Right, cool. got, we've, got a, we've got years of fucking shitty eating. To yeah, go. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just throwing this out there. You just heard it, it dropping that now. kind of weight over and over again. That's how you get the bettest. That's how you get the bettest. So just throwing it out there. Uh, he also picked up the habit of reading off of cue cards instead of memorizing his lines. That will also be a reoccurring theme throughout his career. Smart guy. And he's a method. He appreciates his time. Yeah, he, he doesn't want to read. I think a scripts. lot of method actors do that though, because they're they more can't about, be bothered. They're they're more about taking in the character than no. the line. That is true, but he couldn't even really remember these cue cards, which we'll find out. He hid these cue cards on set in many very interesting places. I am very excited <laughs> to hear this. Oh. And on, on top of that, he was a mumbler, fellow mumbler. Oh. I'm like, fuck yeah, that's me. I get drunk. I eat a lot of food. <laughs> I'm method act. The 1950s were Brando's golden years. The wild ones made him into a sex icon. He actually made the whole Levi's and leather jacket thing a fucking. It's good luck. Yeah. Fuck James Dean. He was a worm. James Dean actually looked up to Brando. That's what I mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's a little slimy a little, little leechy boy. ass bitch ass. LA Times said Brando's Brando was rock and roll before anyone knew what rock and roll was. Yeah, it's a little preachy. I, I, it smells like a commercial to me, but go on. He banged the fuck out of everyone in the 50s. How could you not? Woman, man, donuts, oh. didn't matter. Oh, he was a, the, he was all he, over the place. He, he liked donuts. He was on the spectrum. If there was a hole, he fucked it, pretty much. All right. That's well, good good on him. Dangerous. You know what you want? You get holes. Daring, daring man. A daring man. Over the course of his life, he was married uh, three times, fathered 11 children, and honestly had too many affairs to count. So I couldn't make a Brando full babies. tally of his... How many <laughs> Brando <laughs> babies are there in total, you think? Oh, well, there's a level of fishing There ones. is one, like, documented bastard. Like, like 20? A, person, yeah. a score of Brando bastards, yeah. you say. Or, a, or, gaggle. No, no, no. a gaggle. A gaggle. Some, some, Brando Brando some of the more notable affairs. I'm just going to glance over a few. No. Uh, Betty Davis. Rock, Hot. Rock Hudson. Hot. An S&M relationship with James Dean. Hot. Uh, Marilyn Monroe. Hot. Mm-hmm. Cary Grant. Extra. And Jackie Kennedy after, you know, JFK took the bullet. No shit. <laughs> yeah. There's a little love triangle there, there, isn't there? No, because... apparently he met her, like, right after the assassination and kind of played the whole, like, I'm sorry about your husband. Yeah. Uh, this is my penis. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. During the 50s, he had a 12 year on and off relationship with Rita Marino, who I've never heard of. But apparently it was so tragic that she ended her life in 1961 with sleeping pills. Shit. It's the fact that he cut that shit off. Like, no more sexy times. There was no sleep. There was no Facebook back then. Thank God I've never had sex with Marlon Brando. <laughs> yeah, you'd be dead. And also uh, 70-something. Uh, at a minimum. It, it, right now, you'd be like, fuck, 100. Yeah, true. Fucking 100. Fucking, fucking 100. 100. <laughs> fucking 100 year olds. Fucking you know 100. what I mean? Yeah. yeah, fucking hundos. Everyone always knew that his real love of his life was Wally Cox, underdog. Oh, he, shit. He said if Wally had been a woman, I would have married him and lived happily ever after. But who did he say that to? Uh, in one of his interviews. What? Later on in the 70s. What? He didn't admit yeah. this in the... F- what fucking balls on him? He, like, he, he became... that guy. The, yeah. way he, the way he portrayed that dog with a cape <laughs> made me so tremendously hot. <laughs> I, I, I cannot I, believe how hard I was. When what, I was, was, was it, what was his fucking tagline? What was his quite Underdog, touch my underwear. Was, <laughs> was underdog Underdog's tag? uh, tagline was, Underdog, look at my red rocket! No! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm getting him confused with Scrappy-Doo or something. Uh, we don't talk about that anymore. No, yeah, we're, Scrappy's dead to us. Don't talk about he's, in the, he's in the mini fridge over there. Let's break him out and count his nipples. Make it two dogs tonight, we done that too. Oh my god, there's only two. He's human. 
<laughs> He's a human dog. And he wanted to fight everyone. Dun, 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 dun. Human dog. Oh, yeah. Human dog. <laughs> I'm great at taking us off in tangents tonight. I love it. Premium rush. You're welcome. Brando wouldn't admit to the public that he was bisexual until the 70s. So all this shit kind of was under the table. He was Hollywood scandal. I swear to God, I don't fuck the It's just white bread. <laughs> it's white bread. <laughs> In 1954, Brandon stole the role of Brandon. Brando stole yeah. the role of Terry Malloy uh, in On the Waterfront. That's a I used to be a contender. Line. Oh, okay, right. He stole that role from Frank Sinatra, and Ooh. Frank was not happy about that Frank. because Brando went on to win an Oscar from that. No shit. Yeah, apparently he hated that movie too. He walked out of the screening. Who did? Really, Marlon Brando. Brando. Yeah, he was just hungry. <laughs> it was crafty. And later on in his uh, career, in 1959, Brando and Sinatra worked together on Guys and Dolls, which is a pretty stupid singing movie. Yeah. What do they call that? Singing movies? It's a musical. Music. Yeah, yeah, singing movies. <laughs> a musical. So luck be a lady Musies. tonight. Yeah, luck be my lady child. I mean, yeah, Frank could really sing, but fuck musicals. There's not a single good musical out there. If you like musicals, think about it. Think, think. Re- reconsider. <laughs> reconsider <laughs> life choices. Think about it. You should also start recycling and stop worshipping Satan. Frank Frank Sinatra was very vocal about his distaste toward Brando, calling him openly, calling calling him Mumbles, and the world's most overrated actor, like, on set. Uh, Like, hey, Mumbles! Gotcha. How you doing, Mumbles? Hey, whoa, whoa! (laughs) It's me, Frankie Blue Eyes, and he didn't talk like that at all. It's a terrible Frank Sinatra. I don't know how he really talked. I know I talked to know what I was saying. You know, yeah, his you knew how to be which I can't do. I can't do that shit. His luck be a lady is just it's a good song. It should just be a song, not in a musical. Because fuck, fuck musical, fuck musical. I'm gonna bring that up this whole fucking podcast. So the rest of it, fuck musical. <laughs> Brando <laughs> hated Sinatra. Sinatra. Cilantro. Sina- Cilantro. <laughs> uh, Brando hated Patrulli. <laughs> <laughs> Brando hated that bitch because he was unwilling to rehearse and do retakes. And Brando worked this to his advantage in a scene in Guys and Dolls when Sinatra had to eat cheesecake. Huh? Oh. Right? So Brando would purposely flub his lines. And every time he did a take, Sinatra would eat a piece of cheesecake. So he flubbed his lines eight times until Frank started to get like visibly nauseous. <laughs> Just <laughs> That's like, oh, cheesecake. Uh, probably like took off his belt and shit. Oh god! And on the ninth take, Sinatra threw his plate on the ground, jammed his fork into the table, and screamed at the director, "These fucking New York actors! How much cheesecake do you think I can act? Eat? Oh Eat-act. god! Eat-act. <laughs> Brando probably ate the leftover cheesecake. Just putting it out there. It's just it's on the floor. It doesn't mean it's bad. <laughs> it's a dry floor. Honestly, though, his uh, diet had shifted to uh, three boxes of Malomars and uh, Cinnabons. Washing them down with a quart of milk. When you say shifted, yeah, that's, that's more like magnified is the right word, maybe? Oh, it's not even magnified yet. Jeez, not okay. even magnified yet. We're this isn't mag- even my final diet form. <laughs> yeah, his final diet form gets pretty pretty crazy. Final diet. After a few uh, socially charged roles, Brando was given his own studio from Paramount. No. Oh. And the whole reason why he wanted a studio was to promote socially aware content. Socially I use content aware. with a capital C. Ooh. Oh, why, wow. why for? Why for use capital C? Because he was just fucking socially, social boy. So, you know, he's a social son. He's social just trying son. to social everything. So, sosh. So shareable. Sosh. It's my bueno, sosh. So he did a few roles, you know, he didn't direct, but he was doing a few roles with this socially aware thing. To be fair with him, he was... Very involved with the civil rights movement. Yeah. Which was, you know, kudos to him. You do the freedom rides or whatever, where they, you know, carted black people to, like, better states. Oh, oh right. Yeah. Lovely. And shit. Get them out of their shitty districts and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like, as a... Shit, he'd do the sit-ins and all that shit, so claps to fucking Brando for that. Uh, but he went on to direct his uh, first movie called One-Eyed Jacks in 1961. Now, originally... Stanley Kubrick was directing that movie. But Paramount fired him and let Brando, who was also starring in the movie, take over directing. Dangerous. Oh, it must have been a great movie then. Yeah, it was great because he doubled the shoot time, the budget, and his waist size. Oh, shit. I mean, that's what you need to double your waist size. Budget and time. Yeah. During during the filming, 
his usual dinner was two steaks. I don't know how many potatoes, just a lot of potatoes, two apple pies a la modes, and a gallon of milk. A up gallon in, of milk? What is he, Charlie up in, Day? Up in his milk. What is he, 18 in 2006? <laughs> up in his milk intake. Two steaks. Uh, a bathtub of potatoes, was yeah, it? probably a bathtub. Two uh, pie a la modes. Yeah, you got like hot steak and cold cream. That's not good in your tummy. This diet meant that his costume needed to constantly be altered. And if that's true, that means the continuity of everything's fucked. Yeah, well, he was just, his waist was just fucking flying all over the place. Yeah, so it just he just balloons throughout the movie, I assume. Would you say he was wasting everyone's time? Uh, <laughs> yeah! uh, so much so that they presented him with a belt at the end of the shoot that said, Hope it fits. And a cake that said, Don't feed the director. Ha ha! Ha ha! Fatty! His inexperience in post-production editing meant that the editing um went on for a really long time he just couldn't make the cuts like he couldn't figure out what worked couldn't make the cut couldn't make the cut fucking paramount eventually pulled him and brando said that paramount didn't like my version of the story cut the movie to pieces and i eventually quit because i was bored of the whole project and just walked away it's easy to get bored when you don't know what's going on yeah they yeah. Were, i get bored of the dmv no, they're I, out of stakes yeah no <laughs> he was out of stakes but like Think about that. He's like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. They fired me. Nah, I'm just bored. You know what I mean? JK, bored. I want to get fired. It's not <laughs> jokes on you. I got a billion already. Well, yeah. Fired on purpose, lol. Yeah. Fired the president. Fired to jail. After this experience, he kind of just gave up on Hollywood. Fuck them anyway. What Honestly. year was that? 61. 61. So very early on in his career, he was like, fuck this shit. Okay, cool. Was Hollywood still Hollywood land back then, or was it, was it Hollywood? worse back then. No, like, Hollywood, it, it stopped being Hollywood land in the 30s. Oh, okay. Early 30s. Oh, I thought what you meant by Hollywood land, like, is it, like, Hollywoody? Oh, oh. Because no, it was worse back then. I was then. just wondering when the like, transition happened, because the sign usually... Yeah. The, the, the big-ass Hollywood sign had L-A-N-D on the ass of it. Until really? Until... Yeah, I think the late thirties or, or mid thirties. Yeah, yeah, so it used to say I could be, I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that was right. In if Tom is wrong, tell me about it. Tell me if I'm wrong. Make me a pop tart. <laughs> Wait, can you make me a pop tart? I want a strudel. Make Travis a pop tart. Make, make, make Cody a strudel. <laughs> oh, he wants a strudel. We want pop tart. I want send it to our PO box. I want a strudel and a bratwurst. One one seven four three PO box billion six no, six six. There's just gonna be a PO box somewhere full of rancid food at the end of the decade. Send it to any PO box no. number you can think of at one one seven four three because I'd love to see that on the news. <laughs> Oh, Mass hysteria affects town as residents receive rancid strudel and meat. I went to get my mail and it was stinky. <laughs> there was blueberry sauce dripping out of it. <laughs> he went on to do his next movie, Mutiny on the Bounty, after many years. Because after this point, people didn't really trust him. You know, this guy's going to fuck around with our movies. Yeah. You know? Well, Look he's how a fat fat boy, guy. So. Like a fatty got off of one movie. Yeah, well, I don't know if he could survive giving him another movie. His his second wife actually took some precautions to make sure he didn't get that fat, Wait. and she she put a lock on the house refrigerator Grr. to stop him from sneaking in there and eating shit. Oh yeah, he just eat the padlock next. Yeah, she started replacing the whole milk with two percent. <laughs> he <laughs> nearly died. <laughs> This beast! Oh, uh, what is that? The Titanic Tuposat! Ah! Oh, what a duplicate! Why the hole? This beast, a uh, padlock, simple padlock, didn't stop Marlon Brando. Because she woke up one morning, found the lock broken, and Brando's teeth marks in a round of cheese. <laughs> Oh, fuck yeah! <laughs> I thought you were gonna say his teeth marks in the padlock. I was like, whoa, how hungry was he? Was he like. Baby, we got giant rats! <laughs> With my teeth marks. Mm, it was rats. It was fucking rats. Now, the fact that it's his teeth marks is speculation. Also, <laughs> he just has one of those laying around. True. <laughs> I think it was a skull and bone society. <laughs> Leaving those teeth marks. Illuminati. Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> yeah. So on Mutiny of the Bounty, he was uh, accused of deliberately sabotaging the movie in almost every aspect of production. All right. He just didn't give a fuck. There were no fucks given. And one newspaper headline said, Six million dollars down the drain. The mutiny of the Marlon Brando. Uh, <laughs> pretty bad. <laughs> and the director uh, claimed that the exec executives deserved what they got when they hired a ham child actor who had complete control over an expensive picture. What does ham child ham mean? Ham child? 
like he was a ham, like a ham bone. No, no, but ham child. Yeah. Ham child I've actor. never heard that before. Like a ham child actor. Yeah, I got a new insult to hammy. sling in New York City. That movie nearly sank MGM. This wasn't Paramount, because Paramount was like, I'm fucking done with this dude. So he's just, yeah. he's just systematically just sinking studios. Not to bankruptcy, but just nearly capsizing yeah. studios throughout Hollywood. Six million dollars. That'll right? make you an awful. That's terrible. <laughs> Six million dollars when, by the way? Uh, this was the late 60s. That's, that's, that's hefty. Yeah, half that's a, a billion. Lot. During the filming, by the way, we I talked about his waist. During the filming... He split 52 pairs of pants during the filming. No shit. Because it was like a swashbuckling, you know, piratey mutiny on the bounty. Right, he had to have a long stance. He needed to show his loins. Yeah, he reached in that lunge, and it was just... <laughs> right. Mm. Right down the seam. It's funny because like, you can split your pants because of your waist. Two different ways. Like, you could shit your pants so hard, you could also split them. <laughs> so, like, I, got, I was confused when you initially said that. Like, Back then, they didn't have talk any about his waist. And I thought you were talking about, like, okay, his shit. It's like <laughs> he split his pants because of it. I'm like, wow, what shit are you? Well, I came up with a solution for uh, that. And if he was actually shitting his pants, it would sag at that point because they made him stretchy pants. Sag, is fuck yeah, sag. yeah. They're like this dude. Fuck this guy. He split fifty two pants. Make some stretch types. He, he's, a, a booty he's, a, he's a wardrobe liability at yeah. that point. He also stretched. He also uh, broke those. Snap. He broke the stretch ones. He broke the stretch boys. I can think of somebody who shouldn't go bungee jumping. <laughs> Marlon Brandos. Yeah. I bet you there's like some <laughs> Vegas memorabilia shop with all of those like broken ass pants. One of those Hollywood auctions. Yeah, you know. Mar seven pairs of Marlowe's ripped jeans. And like six sequ sequ So I got like six dollars. Six dollars. <laughs> <laughs> During the filming, I mean, there had to be a lot of eating with all these split pants. One person observed him rowing out into the middle of a lagoon with five gallons of ice cream. <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with this Five guy? Gallons what is that is coming? Like a drum or a steel like barrel? A handle? <laughs> yeah, you ever see those things at big ice cream tubs that they have at like Baskin Robbins? Or friend Lee's. Yeah, those are five gallon tubs. <laughs> yeah, you can fit like two of those in like a Home Depot bucket. It's a, it is a Home Depot no. bucket of ice cream. And the boat was buoyant with Brando and all of this cream? Dude, he could float for days. He's yeah. got so much padding. A lot of hot gas. <laughs> yeah. Christ. Besides his love, his new love for you know five gallons of ice cream, he upped his ante, right? He oh, uh, no, no, stop. Why was he in the middle of the lake with the ice cream? Because he was filming in Tahiti the whole time. So why was he didn't want to share? Didn't want to share. Didn't want people seeing him fucking pudging out. <laughs> I was like, where is he going with the ice cream? And you just, just left me there. He like, just, I could just see him sweating. Uh, I'm rowing <laughs> out there. Yeah. Don't worry, my sweet baby. Imagine you're the. <laughs> Nobody's gonna um, stop us from dude, being together because cause I love you. Dude, and no one can take that from us. Five gallons! <laughs> dude, imagine if you're the AD and you have to explain that to like an offset executive. <laughs> like, what's Where? Brando doing? He's in the lake rowing with yeah, just, just, drums of cream. Just pulls out his binoculars. Oh, there he is. Yeah, why, uh, do we why do we have so many kayak rentals on the budget? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a fucking Looney Tunes thing. It like, gets worse, dude. We're only go, you know, go. Yeah, we get worse. Besides food, his new love was Tahiti. He married a Tahitian wife. Tahitian. Uh, Tahitian. Yes, it's pronounced Tahitian. <laughs> <That's not true. laughs> that is not That's true. true. He married a Tahitian wife and had two children. I mean, he already had children before this, but these children are important. Uh, which is uh, Cayenne and Christian. Ate it. My favorite spice and my favorite god. <laughs> <laughs> and he bought a Bravo. a twelve island atoll island. What the fuck island. is that? Atoll is like a stretch of islands. Oh, okay. So, so it was like an island. You know how the poops look coming off of Alaska? Yes, that that's an atoll. atoll. Thank you. Uh, which would later be renamed Marlin Brando Island. Now there's a Creative. resort called the Brando. And yeah. is that one of the ones that's overrun by pigs? No, that's in the Caribbean. <laughs> that's where you want to go to the fire festival. Well, that's called Long Island. Oh, get your grill, get your grill Long cheese. Island is the island covered with pigs. <laughs> I'm gonna go to a festival and see Pharrell. It's gonna be sick. <laughs> Brando instantly assimilated with the local culture. Inseminated. <laughs> <laughs> I did a little bit of that. Too. He probably also inseminated a lot of the local culture. Hello, Tahiti. <laughs> <laughs> 
Stop the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking socks and sandals. Thank you for knowing who I am. <laughs> Welcome to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Pre lubed. Well, when he wasn't, <laughs> when he wasn't pre lubed, ready to fuck the entire island. Sounds he was like making it. his quote unquote real life mounds bars. <laughs> Which was uh, <laughs> what? What is that? It what is a, a, oh, yeah? It was a cracked open coconut with chocolate that was melted in the sun, then put in the coconut and like stirred around. That's so another was, Charlie Day thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, it's good. I mean, <laughs> you ever have outdoor ice cream? <laughs> Did he husk the coconut at least? I mean, at least to be fair, this doesn't sound fucking disgusting. <laughs> No, oh, it sounds delectable, sounds but he probably had about six or like, seven out of click. Yeah, exactly. yeah, and it sounds like each one costs like sixty-seven dollars to make when there's a convenience store behind him. <laughs> he just clawed his way up the tree with his teeth, got the coconut, just cracked into it. I was like, my eh, chocolate. My I can see him just like that. running into it, like backing up and running and <laughs> uh, uh, plowing it down. Yeah, and the truck backup sound goes. Because the way this guy fucks and the way this guy is weighted, I feel like he could just thrust into it enough times. And knock down, uproot it. Yeah, yeah. Fucking. I got all the cocoa I want. Brando's career devolved and just became shittier over time because now he'd fucked up two pictures. You know, I mentioned the Mutiny on the Bounty and the One Eye Jacks. Complete shit. He did roles, but like basically just spent time fucking. You know, fucking on tahini. Right. Tahini. 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 That's tahini a good sauce. That sounds that's a good, good sauce. He probably had a lot of tahini there too. Mm. And it wasn't until Francis Ford Coppola cast him into into the role of Don Corleone in The Godfather. That's when his uh you know, his career started off again. Yeah, his reprisal. Yeah. Oh. Paramount was very apprehensive about hiring him. There's three conditions that they had for him. He would take a lower pay, he would he would accept fiscal responsibility for like the film. If oh, it okay. bombed, it was his fault. <laughs> If it bombed, or it, if it, and it was on the hook, if it bombed, budget. if it bombed because of him, you know, like oh, okay, yeah, his yeah. performance, the fact that he like, and if that was true, he'd be res- he'd have to pony up the difference, yeah, fiscally pay that. Oh, and he also had to do submit a screen test, which for an actor that big, you don't do a screen test again. Yeah, everyone knows who you are. But that's when he invented the whole, you know, Godfather with the cotton balls in his mouth thing. I just imagine it's like beautiful. Marlon Brando's like audition to like a camera, like. Say your name. Look into the camera and say your name. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. Who, who are you is the question. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know why they didn't terminate his contract immediately, because the first thing Brando did when he got the role was he started bitching about Burt Reynolds, who was apparently going to be Michael Corleone in The Godfather. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah. Didn't know that. Um, And he said he was going to drop out if they cast... Burt Reynolds. And he, uh, uh, no. He's pulling a prima donna. That was eventually, I think, Al Capone? It was not Al Capone. Uh, Al Capone was an actual bobster. Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Other Al. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't Burt Reynolds. It wasn't Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds did The Longest Yard. That was later portrayed by Adam Sandler. Sexy, sexy facial In a remake hair. also called uh, The Longest Yard. <laughs> Adam Sandler. During the shoot, the cast had a very interesting way of uh, getting comfortable with each other. Oh. James Kahn and Robert Duvall used to moon Brando as a joke. He probably Just, liked it. Yeah, well, he's a head of little painful, young butts. That's painful for me, because I only know James Kahn and Robert Duvall as husks. So <laughs> right. I, it's hard to... My mind's eye is brown, right? <laughs> All brown butts. You got a soft brown eye. Mm. Brando took the cake by mooning the entire audience during like the giant wedding scene. And, oh, really? Yeah, he just fucking dropped his pants and just mooned everyone. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> The extras in the back, like, oh, I can't believe I, well, I can oh, barely I missed, see. I missed it. <laughs> I missed it. Brando would go on to win the Academy Award for Best Actor for this role, but he declined it and sent famously sent a Native American there to accept the reward, award because he was into Native American rights at that point. Hey, that's cool, I guess, uh-huh. but also it's it was a little insane. Watch the footage. Yeah, also the fact that he was very against like Native Americans being poorly represented in Hollywood, but he, in an earlier role, was in brownface for a Mexican Viva Zapata. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. That's probably why he felt bad. Yeah, he's like, oh, well, it's only bad if everyone else does it except for me. I got a few more quick movies to do right. before I wrap this up. Last Tango in Paris came, up, came out a few years after The Godfather. This was also critically acclaimed, but it was an X-rated movie. 
X rated? X rated. Shit. Sassy. There's a lot of fucking, you know, shady shit in this. Right. There was a famous rape scene where Marlon. Infamous Mar- rape scene. Yeah. Inf- infamous. Please. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's famous because the movie is, uh, you know. I get, yeah, all right. You know. But this rape scene uh, involves Brandon's character, Paul, anally raping Maria Schneider's character, Gene, with butter as lubricant God, on why? the floor. Why? Well, what kind of floor? The butter makes sense. It, yeah. What kind of floor? It do. It do. What kind of floor? Hardwood. Linoleum. It matters. Does it? You, butter on shag carpet? Are you going to... Mm. Mm, yeah, no, that's true. get it to warrant. The catch is, is that the director and Brando had like a conversation before the scene mm. and didn't tell Maria that she was going to be raped Lovely. on set that day. Whoa. So watch this. Essentially, they were like assaulting her on camera because like the emotions were there. He was like legitimately forcing himself on top of her. Yeah. And she said that, honestly, I felt <clears throat> extremely humiliated and felt raped. <laughs> like, she was raped. Yeah. This she ra- felt what she was. Yeah, I mean, she was raped. That's horrible. Yeah, As this Brand- you should. This crusty old Brando boy. She was like nineteen. He was in his for- in his forties. Oh, that is a normal rape reflex. Feeling raped as you're being raped. Yeah, that's terrible. And the fact that they like knew it before. This information only came out in uh, 2013, I think. Yeah, so premeditated, right? That's he was already been dead, but it's crazy. Ooh, it's shitty. Back to the cue cards. Yes, please. Here we are. He tried to because uh, he didn't know any of his lines. He asked the director to write his lines on Maria's ass. Oh, man. He's hiding it. Wait, so they wrote it on her ass, so mm-hmm. he, and he's looking at her ass. Reading the lines. Reciting. While raping? It was a different scene. Oh, okay. Yeah, different scene. Not raping. You were confused yeah, really that's bad there hard. for a second time. Yeah. Brando then went on to do Superman, where he uh, played jor a little bit lighter role. Not raping anyone. Oh, good. <laughs> jor who, that is Superman's father. Yeah. Yeah. LL. He only uh, the only way that he did the role was that he refused to read the script. He didn't fucking read the script at all, and he wanted one point seven million dollars for this bit part. He only did f- two weeks on set for this. Yes, really. I can't remember Marlon Brando doing this, and the fact that he didn't read the lines meant he needed to hide his cue cards. So right. they'd have to like they'd have to hide the fact that there were cue cards like posted on the wall. You know, like frame the shot in a way oh, right. where oh, he's fuck, he's literally fucking the movie's composition up. Yeah, as an actor, that's brilliant. And one of the more creative ways that he read his line was actually on Superman's diaper. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he's holding Superman up in the air, like above his head, and just reading the lines off of baby Superman's butt. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> he, I guess he likes writing lines on butts. I didn't yeah. know put that together, but he's a butt man. He's a butt man. Mm. Uh, he would go on, he kind of, like, let himself go at this point. Like, didn't really give a shit after Superman. Mm. It's like, blah, I don't care about doing movies. His eating habits got worse, though. Okay. Uh, on what scale would you say? In Missouri, Missouri Breaks in 1976, he was so hungry that he literally reached into a pond, grabbed a frog out of the pond, took a bite of it, and then said, when you're hungry, you're hungry, I guess. Fucking with us. What? Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, wow. that is something he did. Oh my goodness. What? It's horrible. Yeah. It's horrible. When, when he wasn't eating live frogs, his favorite snack, snack, grant you, was a full pound of bacon with an entire loaf of bread. Sandwiched in between an entire loaf of bread. Why is he so hungry? I don't, I don't so know. If I, know just... I know heavy set guys who wouldn't eat that. Like, that would be a meal. I wouldn't for eat them. that. I wouldn't eat that shit. I mean,. A fro- How did he catch a frog? I don't know. That's some fucking nit- Jedi shit. All the fat went to his stomach, none to his arms. So they were. So he was just a spinning top of grabbiness. Yeah. Later in the eighties, Brando's girl, Brando's girlfriend, uh, retained one. No, <laughs> left him after. <laughs> left him after his. He was trying to diet, but kept ballooning. You know, just like constantly going up and down and up and down. Yeah. Later, un- unknown to her, it came out that his buddies were buying him Burger King Whoppers and throwing them over the gate on his Mahal- Mahalan Drive estate. Ah! He's like, <laughs> yeah, honey, I'm dieting. So he's just eating, what, floor burgers? So he he was Rodney Dangerfield and Easy Money at the end of that. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Hey, Ma, I'm eating the things I should be eating. I'm going down to the boiler room. <laughs> you, 
you know he had like confrontation with wildlife I, for the frogs, burgers. Frogs had it out. No, 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 for the burgers that were thrown over into his yard. Oh yeah, yeah. I think it was like, oh yeah. He's like squaring off with a raccoon, but he just decides to eat the raccoon instead of the whopper at the end. He he did own a shotgun, did he? And what he used to do with that shotgun for was burger he... hunting. Yeah. <laughs> What he used to do with that shotgun was he would freeze scripts in his freezer. Mm-hmm. So they get all hard, probably get them wet, frozen. Yeah. Then use them as skeet shooting. Oh, that's hilarious. He's just like, didn't give a fuck. Just like, pull! <laughs> that's really bad and cool. He formally retired from acting in 1980, but he would kept doing movies. It was one of those, like, actors always say, I'm retired. Yeah, and then uh-huh. like, fucking a thousand more movies. JK Rowling. Really. You work freelance. You never actually worked. Some of his later movies included Christopher Columbus, The Discovery in 1992, and also The Island of Dr. Moreau, which both of which he wrote, he won a raspberry for the worst actor. Oh, hey. beautiful. Yeah. Oscar and a raspberry. Oscar and, yeah. That's a spectrum for that's, you. That's the ne- our, our next guy will also have an interesting uh, spectrum of awards, by the way. Oh, I like that. At this point, he weighed over 350 pounds and had type 2 diabetes from all this eating. Mm. Yeah, dog. Also in the early 90s, he had a little bit of tragedy. It's kind of fucked up, but those two children that I mentioned about the Tahitian wife. Uh, right. Spaghetti and, important, and, spaghetti and, 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 and chili. <laughs> you said they were important. Spaghetti and chili, right? What were their real names again? Uh, it was Cayenne and Christian. So for the longest time, he wouldn't actually let them visit him in the States because he, for someone that was so into civil rights and everyone's equal, he said Tahitians were too trusting. And if they came to the States, they would be destroyed by their pa- by the pace of life. My friend's throwing whoppers at them. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, obviously everyone's equal in his eyes, except, you know, if you're Everybody looks too like innocent, me here. come over here. Eventually he allowed them. And, and during one visit in 1990, Christian fatally shot Cayenne's boyfriend. Cayenne was pregnant at the time. Jeez. Suffered a psychotic episode, and what did Brando do? Sent her to a psych ward. Oh, pregnant. Yeah, pregnant. pregnant sent her to a psych Jeez. ward because her brother fucking was a shit. Francis farmered her. Just keep moving. Okay. <laughs> Hollywood reference. Uh-huh. So she was diagnosed with a, with schizophrenia, and her baby was stripped from her. Ooh. She would Ouch. later return to Tahiti, where she would hang herself. Oh my goodness! And what Brando and the brother didn't show up for the funeral. Really? Yeah. What were they doing? Were they eating Burger King? <laughs> Probably no, bacon loaf, apparently. Yeah, uh, well, apparently Brando did have a little bit of guilt at that point. He said, I feared, uh, he he said that he feared his overindulgent lifestyle made uh, made it difficult for his children, which you think, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Maybe a little bit? Maybe your dad's not supposed to be Santa. <laughs> All right, Brando made it to the 2000s. Cool. The naughties. He got past the millennium. It was difficult for him. He was 300 pounds and now barely could see because he had liver cancer and diabetes. I was going to say, because of the 300 pounds? Like, how much of the fat was in his forehead? It droops. He would spend weeks with his longtime close friend, Michael Jackson, at the Neverland Ranch. What? Yay! I thought there was ranch sauce there. His son, Miko, was actually Michael Jackson's bodyguard and assistant for many years. Hey, that's cool. Yeah. And uh, he loved the outdoors so much that Michael invited him over to Neverland. Dad could name all the trees, flowers, but being on oxygen, it was hard for him to get around. Uh. So Michael got bought him a golf cart and put an oxygen tank on. They'd drive around. Him and little Michael Jackson Fuck naming yeah. trees. Hey. Hello. Well, uh, Michael was also into using oxygen tanks. <laughs> oh, yeah, the hyperbolic. Yeah. He was, yeah. Yeah. He was a hyperbolic boy. Yeah. He just wanted to breathe and be high. All right, we're going to go to Brando's last film. Last role. What happened? In 2004, Brando recorded voice tracks for a movie called Big Bug Man. I don't remember. You don't remember it because it was never released. Okay. Oh, shit. Right. But his his role was Miss Sour. And this was Brando's first role as a woman. I'm sure he was very excited about it. was his first time doing drag. Yep. He would actually, it was even, it was a voice part, but he would dress up in a wig and like makeup and mic gloves. Hell yeah. Fucking do his role. Big Bug Man also co-starred Brendan Fraser. No <laughs> shit! Ah! And Brendan Fraser! Uh, One of the man. greatest actors of our time. Yeah. Didn't rub off. So the re- recording took place at Marlon Brando's home and was cut short because he had a hard time breathing. He just couldn't do his lines as Miss Sour. Ooh. And a month later, he died of respiratory failure and pulmonary fibrosis with cognitive heart failure. Basically died of everything. Oh, it all just... <laughs> It was just like, I'm done. Like a card house. Yeah. Well, that sucks. Yeah. And he also sucks. He also sucks. He was cremated, 
And his ashes were mixed with Wally Cox, boyhood friend. Oh, really? Which was kind of weird. Yeah. Be- yeah. That's fucking they, weird. Well, they definitely plowed. Uh, yeah, well, sh- uh, Wally died in 1974. <laughs> From and what? From plowing? I don't know exactly what he died for, but Brando, like, took his ashes from his wife <laughs> and also his pajamas and would wear his pajamas around the house. Oh, shit. This like, is sick. This is my Wally. So he kept it for all those years and mixed Wally's ashes in with her, with his, hers, his, and would, and scattered them around Tahiti and Death Valley. That was his last wish. Death Valley? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the Death Valley reference yeah. was. I didn't find that. <laughs> He like um, hated whoever he te- he willed to do it. Like, now, wasn't he also doing VO for the Godfather video game? He was. That was also another role. Yeah, but had. they didn't finish it, right? Apparently, he only did like one line and had to leave. Yeah, yeah. And it's in the game. Yeah, yeah. Which is hilarious. It's crazy. It's like I'm the Don. The one and done. done. A one and done. Probably also was getting paid like a million dollars for that. Yeah, for one line. That's good. So that's Marlon Brando. I kind of think he was a little hypocritical and definitely a fat ass. Well, he, yeah, he sucks. I mean, a lot of actors do, I guess. I think that's the thing. Comes with the title. Yeah, I think the only other person I can think of that probably ate as much as him is probably like Elvis Presley. Well, maybe hey. I'm going to throw it out there. Dom DeLuise. Guy Fieri. Oh, his job. yeah. Uh, he he was... did play a parody version of him in Men in Tights. <laughs> very true. I, very true. Out of these cotton balls in my mouth. <laughs> that's that boy. Nice. That was a fun one. It was a goodie. Yeah, roasty boy. Indeed. The roasting boys. There was actually a lot of shit that I couldn't include about him because he's a crazy he, actor. He asked Legal reasons? Him. Yeah. Yeah. You I don't was, want the defamation suit? Yeah, the Brando family came after me while I was just looking it up on my computer, read my cookies. Did, <laughs> you think they would be the kind of people to be like, hey, don't discredit our Brando brand. Hey! And then point, point and wink. I know you can't hear me winking, audience, but... A wink. I'll do a sound effect. Yeah, that's what my winks <laughs> don't do dis, sound like. Don't diss my brand, daddy. Yeah, diss my brand, daddy. My brand! My brand! Yeah. All right, badass. Yeah. So, listeners, thank you for checking us out. Yeah, if you like our podcast, leave five stars. There you go. Oh, five star. The five star milk splash. Yeah. <laughs> I feel violated with that one. <laughs> also subscribe yeah. yeah that's more important Just leave a subscribe and touch the tips yeah subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher what are the other ones we got now? Google, Google Play. Play yeah one of those the dog is molesting my penis right now oh that's gross hey. <laughs> yeah it's weird yeah so subscribe to one of those and next week as a teaser I'm going to leave you with this we're going to look at a gentleman who is a jelly explosive expert Jelly. Ooh, spooky well, jelly. So before plastic explosives, there were jelly explosives. Yeah, if you figure out who that is, uh, why don't you tweet at us at Roast Boredom Cast? Well, that Twitter. just spoil yeah. it for everyone else in our feed. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's still fun. Yeah, I mean, Woo! jelly explosives are better if you stick your dick in them. People really don't come here for a surprise. They come here for facts. Hard facts. Hard hitting hard, reporting hard, of things hard, that happen. Hard, stiff, yeah. glistening facts. This is cutting edge news. Yep. Glistening Thank- Edge News. Glistening Edge News. Wow. Well, you've been listening to the Roast Mortem cast, Glistening Edge News source. I am Tom Saltman. Follow me at Saunched, S A U N T C H T. I am Shiny Boy Travis. You can follow me at Travis Legion. I'm not going to spell it out for you. They need to know there's another E in there. No, they don't. They don't even know shit. Just follow our Twitter. We're all there. Yeah, we're and there. I am Cody McCann at Cody McCann, C O D Y M W C A W N. And collectively, Roast Mortem cast. Find oh, us yeah. there. Yeah, at Roast Morm Cast. Instagram, Twitter. Do it. Yeah, thank you, Shane. Dank, my Shane. Thank you, Shane, for listening. My Shane. Dank, 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 dank. Shane. Dang, 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 dang. Hi there. You like what you just heard? We'd love to hear back from you. Yeah! Mm-hmm. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram. Yeah, that's at it. Roast Mortem Cast. Yeah, that's right. That's us. That's us. And if you tag us on either one of those social platforms, mm-hmm. we will write an obituary for you. You sexy corpse, you. Yeah, write in. We're going to write an obituary for you. Make sure you tell a friend. Give us a subscription. Yeah, let us know how we're doing. How you're doing, too. Yeah. I want to know how I'm doing, how you're doing. It's just a good old no one doing fest. Yeah. No one doing fest. That's right. Don't do it. Do it. 
yeah. for me. Stick around right now for some obituaries and some outtakes. Here we go. Oh shit, some people died. Ghost Childs. <laughs> Hey everyone, you made it to the Roast Mortem Obituaries, where we kill off some fans that have tweeted at us. Good job, you tweeted at us, you're gonna be dead now. You or done it, or dead. Or Instagrammed at us. Or Instagram. Either or. You yeah. killed yourself. You killed it, bro. We are equal opportunity reapers. That's so, right. the first person on our obituary mm. is Mary Core from Chicago, Illinois. What happened to her? How'd she die? Well, first I'm gonna say how she deserved this fucking oh bitch. Oh, ah, okay. Mm. She said that we should do movie commentaries, really? specifically historical movie commentaries. Okay. Which is kind of funny because we've already done that. We just haven't put them out yet. That yeah, sounded have... like familiar. Yeah. yeah. We have a we have a bunch of those ready to go, not published yet. Yep. No, they're not ready. In no. the can. So I'm a killer right now. Yeah, killer. So she walked in wasted into a European wax center. Oh, oh shit. and she noticed on the sign there was the Baby Bell special, oh, and doing? she strolled. I'm, I'm, I'm take the Baby Bell special, and she she sat down on the waxing table because I've never been to a waxing center. Uh, it's probably a table. Got to be a table. And all of a sudden, fucking seven hundred gallons of baby melted Baby Bell falls on her, and she's keep in mind she is uh, lactose intolerant, so she swells up to the size of a uh, of a of a large balloon. Oh. <laughs> Oh my. Before she drowns in Baby Bell. She is lactose intolerant. She mentioned that to you exclusively. Yes. So that, all right. So perfect. it's extra gory. So now you're extra dead. Customized. Yeah. That's nice. how you die. Rest in peace. Yeah. One of the things she also mentioned to me, she's interested in getting into podcasting. Hey, oh. And she had some really interesting ideas. And I want to throw it to you, Tom, because what you need to, like, start... We got a lucky. You're an audio engineer. I am. A sexy yes. one. So, but if you're, like, getting into podcasting, what do you need? The bare essentials. All right, well, for starters, I am an audio engineer. Not everyone has hundreds of thousands of dollars of microphone equipment and preamps yeah, and interface up. and stuff. Up. Not everyone's as fortunate as I am. So what you could do is download Audacity, which is a free program on both Mac and Windows. Hell yeah. And that's how you're going to record stuff. And what you're going to need is a microphone. You could buy a USB microphone, just plug right in there. It's got a little preamp, make you sound all right. So a microphone's like something that captures your soul into a little tiny cube. Yeah, when you speak it, it's a capture. Oh, okay. You know? How much should you spend on one of these microphones? You can get a podcast running for under 150 bucks. You're going to want a nice pair of headphones so you can monitor how you're sounding. Yeah, you want to be extra hard, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. So yeah, just uh, get some audacity. You just need a microphone. Oh yeah, that's the that's it. Some headphones. I'm sure you own some already. Use them. You look at some YouTube tutorials to check out how to hook your shit up just right. But if you want a podcast, anyone can podcast, and you can do it, Mary. I swear to God, we believe. Oh yeah, dog. If you weren't dead, we'd believe in you. Tom, what uh, what what's the next fan that died? Oh, the next person on Instagram, mm -hmm. douche mastery. Now, we looked at Douche Mastery's, what do you call them, profiles? I don't have his an Instagram. Instagram. His Instagram. Instagram. Oh, we yeah. looked at his feed. page, his, his feed. feed, yes, and we, we noticed he's a metalhead. So, for his obituary, I'm going to quote obituary, the band, <laughs> oh, at some shit. point. Well, yes. This is meta as fuck. I'm not ready for this. Yeah, he's a, he's a metal guy like myself. We all, we all, pause here, we took a little gap here, we all put on corpse paint for you. Appropriate for Rose Martin. So what cast. happened with uh, Douche Mastery is that he was at a, he was at a heavy show. Something real heavy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> something real fucking heavy. Yeah, he was he was uh he was catching something riffy. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. And it was dangerous in that pit. He was throwing elbows and shit like that, putting up his dukes. All of a sudden, good pit. Show ends. Power out. Whoa. Gone. So the guy was like, ah! and just like it just went out. I won't go home because power's gone. All right. So he had to leave. And on his way out the door, the guys fixing the damn power. They pull up way too quick. Knock over the damn pole that's out. There we go. We got a man chopped in half. Whoa. Whoa. Reference to an obituary song. A little bit of that. Chopped in half. Feel the blood spill from your mouth. With rotting ways comes destiny. Feel the soul taking over. Bleed. <laughs> you wow. did now, douche mastery. Tom, I feel like that's way more understandable than it actually is in real life. It's probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, homie from Obituary, you, you can hear what he's saying. He's, ah! I can't do it as well. Uh, you know, pros. All Old right. school pros. All right, Cody, who, who who's going to die now? Third and final death of these obituary sessions is one, Timothy Crawley, friend of this podcast. 
Tim. He's dead now. <coughs> Why did Tim have to die? I liked him. Good boy. Know him well. He's a great man. Why are we killing this guy? We're killing this guy because on Instagram, Tim liked our art and suggested this art be emblazoned upon victorious RMC t-shirts. Ooh. Oh, some roast mortem tea. Yeah, apparently oh. he has the hookup that uh, can make that happen. Oh, uh, shit. You ninnies at home let us know if that's something you'd be interested in. If you guys want tall teas, we're only doing extra long teas. I don't know if teas. Tim can do the tall teas. No, 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 he can. I know he can. All we're right. only doing tall teas. No, it's very interesting, Travis, but shut up and let Cody continue. <laughs> I'm gonna kill him now. Thank you, Tim, but you're dead now. Tim Crawley, viciously manhandled by a covert assassin. Oh. Aggressively shoved out of a two-story window. Two stories, eh? Defenestrated, mind you. Two stories high. Landed directly upon a clutch of fragmentation, anti-personal landmines. Shit. Whoa. He's everywhere now. So yep. he fell <clears throat> off the building onto explodies. Pushed off of a second-story window onto explodies. But unfortunately, the assassin was never caught and the explosives did not go off. So to the world, it looks just like Tim Curley fell out of the second-story window. Shit. Shit. Well, oh, and he's everywhere. No. He's exploding. No, it didn't explode. Just mm. to the rest of the world, it wasn't as heroic. He just looked like he fell out of a two car. I believe, so, I believe in personal heroes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I believe in miracles. No, so I think Tim is still alive in my spirit. Yeah, we'll see you next weekend. <laughs> he, yeah, yeah, he's alive <laughs> somewhere. He needs to do t shirts for us. Thank All you, right, Tim. So that is the Roast Mortem obituaries. And uh, possible shirts coming up. Yeah, possible shirts. Want some coffee, Dahlia? Wake me up inside. Can't wake up. Something else inside. I don't want to wake up. Save me. No. <laughs>